Hey, Bruno. You are Bruno. Wow, Wally here. Guys, this knife. This knife has been on my radar for quite some time. Uh, and just recently, I decided, right, I wanted one. Okay, I wanted one. Uh, I've been thinking about getting one, and then I couldn't justify it. Then I got into some World War II stuff, and I was thinking about, you know, commando knives and stuff like this. And this has just got stabby, stabby knife written all over it, guys. This is the Glock 78 field knife. Okay. But, listen to this now. Is it any good at bushcraft? Stay tuned. What do you think of this, Bruno? Do you like this? Do you like this? Right, here it is, guys. Look, this is the way it comes. It's quite long. It's quite thin. Okay, but it's quite thick. It is, it is a hell of a beefier knife than I was expecting. I was expecting something quite dainty and thin. Guys, it does seem to me that that is about four mil thick on the spine. It's, it's it's really nice in the hand, like K-bar nice in the hand. That's what it feels like, guys. But well, look at the length of that blade. Look at the length of that blade. Guys, this just arrived today. There is no sharpening done to it, nothing. I did just cut a piece of paper like this with it, uh, you know, just to see what it's like. And this is made in Austria, the Glock 78. You guys are never going to be able to pick that out. Let me see now. See that right there. And these retail for approximately 40 pound, 41, 42 pounds sterling uh, in on, on Henny. And guys, about 30 bucks, 30 dollars in the States as well, okay? The blade length is 16 and a half centimeters, guys. Now this is described as a field knife, okay? But as far as I know, this is actually uh, a bayonet for the Steyr AUG, A U G, okay? And that's what this little thing here, this bottle opener that people call it, and this little cap at the end comes off as well, okay? Now, bush, uh, Dutch bushcraft knives, they absolutely give this thing a really tough challenge. They give it a couple of really tough challenges, guys, and this thing handled it absolutely no problem. Uh, you know, so, it's a good knife, it's a strong knife, but you know, you just gotta find these things out for yourself, don't you? Guys, look, unlike the, the, the other knives that I have that are fighting style knives, this is not sharpened here, okay? And the thing about these coated blades is that unless you give them a little bit of a sand, they are not good at throwing sparks from a ferro rod. But let's batter something with it and let's see how it gets on. Away, Bruno, away, away, away. Away now, you. Before we do, let's look at the sheath. Guys, this little hole right here, there's a little indent right there, and it's on both sides, okay? And this little clip here goes right into it, and it's ambi, so you can, you can just turn the blade around. Doesn't matter, left or right-handed, listen. It has a really solid belt clip that you just actually twist off to the side, but well, this is the thing about mine. You see the way that this is molded and it has a line on it. See this like like a mold line that runs the whole way up the sheath. Well, that actually prevents mine from closing and opening properly. So if I pull this back, it sort of stops like that. See it? It gets stuck halfway. I'm still stuck halfway. No, see, it just sort of gets stuck. That means then it's really difficult to get out. Okay, it's really difficult to open that. But that would be something that. See, I can't even open that. That would be something that five minutes with a piece of sandpaper would completely take care of that. Anyway, let's let's beat something with it. The sheet, the sheath is good. It's not not amazing, but it completely works. Okay. That's the point, I suppose, isn't it? So I have some, I have a piece of sycamore here, and I have a piece of uh, of pine here. The pine would, is gonna cause this the most trouble, if, if it causes it any trouble at all, uh, because it is going to, 
it's very twisted so let's just see look look at that look at how twisted that wood is no problem nope look at that look at that wood Bruno's like this is for me everything's for me I haven't sharpened it as I said guys Bruno you can have one of these okay and that's no problem no problem at all which one do you want Bruno do you want that one <laughs> Let's try this. This is this is not good wood. Look at that. Look. That's rotten. That's a piece of rotten wood. I don't even know why I picked that up. Well it's not rotten that end actually. It's nearly punk wood now at that stage. Well look, so we'll we'll get rid of that end. Think we'll be going back to the pine, boys. No problem. And this is the thing that's surprising about it. It is really nice in the hand. Uh, like I've, I've had K bars and stuff like that in the past, and they're nice. But the, you know, and you know, it's the history involved in the K bar and stuff like that that I like. No, Bruno, you get back now. That's too close. Uh, you know. But uh, in the field, I did not find the K-Bar to be a nice knife. I didn't like to use it. Uh, it just, it's just one of these things that is nicer to have because of its history. Do you know what I mean? Feathers nicely. Flat wood there, isn't there, Bruno? Sometimes I think he's half owl. Did you see the way he could turn himself around like that? That's a decent, that, that's decent, you know, uh, it's not, it's not going to throw sparks, I don't see it throwing sparks, unless I can do something with this little bit here, okay, back, back, sit, there we go, okay, so, the little drop point will throw a spark, okay, so, that might actually work out better. It means that you, you, you might be able to go like this. Or maybe even like this. It's not bad actually, it's, it's better than I thought. Ow! I just cracked myself on the knuckles. No, Bruno, away, you have enough sticks. Here, take that one and go. Take it, go. Now I've lost it.
It is hard to control it though. And I have removed all the paint from that area. So maybe if I just, well, actually, no. Look at this, look. What we actually have here on the back of the knife is that it is rounded, slightly rounded. See that? So you you would be talking about filing that, which would make no difference. Guys, one thing I did notice when I was doing that is check out the blade. It does the cutting edge of the blade doesn't actually start until here. So we have all this. There's about there's about half an inch there wasted, okay, but you could sharpen that out of it, I'm sure. So that was it, guys, just straight out of the box. Straight out of the box. Uh, it actually performed... I can't stop now. <laughs> that is the Glock 78 field knife. Uh, I, am, I am glad to have this in, in my collection. It is a cool knife, guys, and it is somewhat capable of, of, of bushcraft. Uh, as every knife is, that is the thing. So, uh, the only thing missing there, and very easy to fix with a flat file, uh, is, is that it doesn't throw sparks, guys. And remember, most mores out of the box won't throw a decent spark either. So, for 40 quid, I think Dutch, the Dutch Bushcraft uh, knives said that this was the best value outdoor knife uh, outdoor at the, uh, out there at the minute. Uh, and I would have to agree with them and it's a Glock so you can see I got a Glock <laughs> It's nice. It, it, it's 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 nice. It's It's nicer than I expected Like way way nicer than I expected it, it, it is it has got a bit of a cool factor to it, you know It does scream stabby stabby knife all bloody day long, but Really does. Can't even see that. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Steve Rosty.